Hey everybody, Mr. Mott. We're going to go over how water and hexane act in different situations. Um, we all know what water is, but hexane is sort of in the family of a kind of a nail polish remover, uh, maybe even a gasoline or paint thinner. Sort of that's a little bit of background on hexane. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about the rate of evaporation. Okay, so I'm always going to have water on the left hand side and hexane on the right. So we're going to take drops of each, just one drop, put it on the lab table, and see which one evaporates first. Okay, so let's see, hopefully we can see that really well. And what we're going to notice here is that the drop of hexane is getting smaller and smaller, so it's actually just evaporating on its own. And um, sort of with that in mind, we can think about how strong are the bonds that are holding those molecules of hexane together. And so if it's evaporating really quickly, then those bonds must not be very strong. Okay? And so water has very strong attraction between those water molecules, so it doesn't evaporate uh, very quickly at all. Okay? And so when we think about um, those bonds in that are between the molecules, we're thinking about the intermolecular bonds. All right? Good. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to be looking at um, capillary action. Okay? So with capillary action, what we're going to do is we're going to take some capillary tubes. All right? So these are just some glass tubes. Uh, they're open-ended, and we're going to dip them each in the water and in the hexane. Okay. So we'll notice there's a big difference in how much, you kind of see on the white background a little bit better actually maybe, that the water, that the water went a lot further up on in the, in the uh, capillary tube than the hexane did. Um, so what can we think, what can we draw, what conclusion can we draw from that? Um, we can think about, well water, you could think about it as being more attracted to the material in the glass. Um, also, you can maybe think about uh, surface tension as well. Okay, um, both of these, if you hold them there, um, they're not going to sort of fall out. Something that's also interesting is that if you kind of try to tip these and move these. You'll notice that the hexane is sort of moving back and forth in the tube, whereas the water moves a lot more slowly. Okay, so if I get them both down to their starting position here. Okay, and then I tip them over. The hexane moves really rapidly, so um, the water must be sort of holding on to the glass a lot easier than the hexane does. All right, so that's capillary action. Uh, next thing we do is talk about surface tension, and so what we're going to do is put drops of water and hexane on a penny. So, and what we would want to do is we'd want to keep track about how many drops we have on the uh, uh, on the penny and also on, on uh, from the water and from the hexane. So we'll start out with hexane and where we're going to stop is when it overflows. Okay, maybe we can move this off to the side to get a little better light here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Actually, I think it overflowed. Eleven, twelve. Yep. So maybe somewhere between ten and twelve, it overflowed. Okay, on the hexane. What we'll do is look at for water. How many drops of water can we get on our penny? All right. So one, two, three, four. You'll notice right away that how the hexane really spread out and the water is really sort of staying in a bubble. Okay, So we're on 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, I'm on 14. I'm going to pause for a second on the drops. I'm going to try to show you from a side angle what does this look like. All right, so looking from the side, we see like sort of that bubble shape, almost like a mushroom shape that's forming on the water. Okay. All right, so we're on 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Let's check out that shape again. I think it's going to be even more pronounced. Oh yeah, big time. All right. Let's go over around like 23, I think. 24. Ah, glad we did that. So we're at 24 versus I think about somewhere between 10 and 12 over here. So we can see water has much more surface tension. So between water and hexane, water must have stronger intermolecular bonds that are holding it together and creates that surface tension that's really strong. Remember surface tension being that strength, that force at the surface of a liquid and that force, how strong it is, is determined by those intermolecular bonds. Okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do is something called follow the leader. Okay, so let me clean this up. Okay everybody, this is uh, follow the leader. Okay, so we're going to put a drop of water. Okay, hopefully we can see that pretty well. And um, what you can do, you can take a toothpick and sort of depending on the angle of it, if you go more vertical, we try to move it here. So you can kind of notice that the water didn't really want to move. I was able to move just a very small amount there. Okay, try to move this away. If I hold it more of an angle, I might be able to pull a little bit of it away, but you'll notice that it really sort of the water molecules, a lot of them, they, will, they want to stay in this group. And then the ones I was able to pull away, they sort of stay together. So thinking about the strength of those intermolecular bonds, um, you're going to notice that the water molecules really want to stay together. Those intermolecular bonds, the bonds between the molecules, must be really strong. Okay. Now, if I want to do this for hexane, all right, I'm going to have to move pretty quickly because the hexane molecule uh, really wants to spread out okay, and evaporate. So I'll put a drop there and I can move it. Let's see if, you can, if we can see this. Hopefully we can see that a little bit on the screen there. That you're really able to spread out the molecule. Okay. So it's, first of all, they kind of spread out you can really kind of move it and you're just really able to spread it out here okay so the reason being those molecules themselves are very have a very weak attraction between those molecules okay and uh, and so uh, another big difference shown in there with follow the leader uh, the molecules that want to sort of stay together like water um, those have a strong intermolecular bond the hexane molecules have very weak intermolecular bonds. Okay, here's our dancing water. So um, we got a little trickle of water, and then I've got uh, some fur here and a ruler. We're going to generate some static electricity using the fur and the ruler. Very similar if you ever rubbed a balloon on your head and tried to stick it on a wall. So we're going to try to get some static electricity, some electrons on here. And we're going to put it next to the water. And we see that water moving towards the ruler there. Okay, so no trickery there. Okay, and see if we can try this on the other side. See that water moving? Okay, right towards the ruler. Okay, so something in that water is causing the is causing the uh, uh, excuse me something on the ruler there. Those electrons are attracted to something in the water and vice versa. Um, and so when you look at the water's polarity, having those partial negatives and partial positive charges, we can understand uh, that parts of the water molecule are being attracted to uh, the electrons that are on the ruler. All right, that's our water hexane lab. Hopefully it's giving you some insight about um, how these different particles behave based on their different intermolecular uh, attractive forces. And hope that helps. Have a good one.